Functional endoscopic sinus surgery, or FES, is keyhole surgery that is performed through the nose to treat diseases of the nose and the sinuses. The sinuses, or the paranasal sinuses, are four paired structures which are located within the bones of the forehead, the cheeks, between the eyes, and further back along the skull base. They help to warm and humidify the air that we breathe, and they produce mucus, which can occasionally lead to chronic infections, or polyp formation, or rarely can house tumors that require surgical treatment. Functional endoscopic sinus surgery, or FES, is usually performed for patients who have chronic sinus infections to help open up and ventilate the sinuses and remove any sources of infection like bacteria or fungus that is formed in these areas. It can also be performed to help remove nasal polyps, which are causing symptoms of nasal obstruction or reduced sense of smell and occasionally pressure and discharge from the nose. Rarely, functional endoscopic sinus surgery is performed to help treat tumors in these areas or to access other deeper structures within the skull base, the eyes or the brain. Before having any sinus surgery, you must always consider the alternatives to surgery and this is something that should have been discussed with you already. For most patients having this surgery for nasal polyps or chronic sinus infection, they would have already had or be taking a prolonged course of topical nasal steroids in the form of a spray or drops or occasionally also steroid tablets. When there is a chronic infection, we sometimes treat this with a prolonged course of oral antibiotics and occasionally we use other medications like antihistamines or nasal rinses or special creams and douches. Occasionally we also perform special blood tests but a CT scan is always performed prior to having this kind of surgery. Should you choose not to have surgery, you could leave things as they are, continuing with medical treatment or using periodic oral antibiotic or oral steroid courses to reduce your symptoms when they're particularly bad. This is something that would always be discussed with you before you decide to have surgery. FES or functional endoscopic sinus surgery is keyhole surgery which is performed using a camera that goes up through the nose without leaving any cuts or marks on the outside. The instruments that we use allow us to open up the sinuses, remove any in polyps or infection, as you can see here. The major benefits of having this surgery are that they aim to remove any source of, of infection, help to ventilate your sinuses, and most importantly, to help improve the delivery of medication like nasal steroids or nasal douches into the nose to prevent exacerbations of your symptoms or recurrence of your symptoms. We always aim with this type of surgery to provide as long a period of relief from symptoms as is possible. All surgery comes with risk, and usually FES is performed under a general anesthetic. General anesthesia means that you will be put to sleep for your surgery, but in the vast majority of cases, this can still be performed as a day case, which means you come in the morning for your surgery and you go home after your operation on the same day. The general anesthetic has some risks and the anesthetist and the pre-assessment nurse who assess you prior to your surgery will discuss these risks with you. With regards to the surgery itself, there are some symptoms that all patients experience after the surgery, like some discomfort, nasal congestion and blood-stained nasal discharge for approximately two weeks. There can be some moderate pain after this type of operation, requiring paracetamol and ibuprofen and occasionally codeine for the first week after the surgery. Some patients are at risk of developing an infection after the operation and so you may be given a course of antibiotics afterwards, so please take that if it has been prescribed. Sinus surgery is aimed at improving your nasal symptoms of congestion, reduced sense of smell, discomfort and discharge. But this relies heavily on the, you continuing to take your topical nasal treatments in the form of nasal steroids or nasal saline rinses after the surgery. If you do not take the medication, the symptoms are highly likely to come back more rapidly than they would otherwise. For some patients with severe disease, the surgery helps to improve symptoms significantly but cannot guarantee that all your symptoms will go away. There are two major risks with sinus surgery. Because of the close proximity of the lining of the brain and the eyes to the sinuses, there is a one in a thousand risk of injury to both of these structures. When that happens, brain fluid can leak into the nose and this, if it becomes infected, can cause symptoms that are associated with meningitis. If this happens, something would need to be done during the surgery to repair that defect. There is also a one in a thousand risk of injury to the eyes. In the worst case scenario, this can cause reduced vision, double vision, or even loss of vision. 
although this is exceptionally rare. For most patients, the recovery period involves a two week period off from work to rest and relax. During this time, you should avoid any heavy strenuous activities because this increases the pressure in the nose and the risk of having a significant nosebleed. After the surgery, you're likely to feel a bit worse than you were before for a short period of time as there are often dissolvable nasal dressings inside the nose that need to be washed out. Your nose can sometimes feel a bit blocked or your sense of smell can be reduced for a period of time while these dressings are dissolved inside the nose. It is important to avoid swimming for the first three to four weeks after the surgery because there is an increased risk of getting an infection. Most patients will be given a course of steroids to take alongside a nasal rinse after the surgery. And it is important that you take this prior to your follow-up, which is usually between two and six weeks, depending on the type of surgery that has been performed. I hope that you find the information in this video useful. It should supplement the information that you receive in your patient letter as well as the information leaflet that you'll be provided prior to your surgery. If you have any questions or want to ask me any more information, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us.